So what you see here are chicken food bags. It's where we keep the food that we feed our pet ducks. Oh no, why is she cutting them up? You can't store food in that anymore. It's just gonna, it's just gonna like splatter all over the place. It, hold on, I remember this. Oh, this is me. This was me making a feed bag dress. Okay, so let me tell you how I did it. First, I traced out the pattern pieces of what I felt like could make a bodice. Um, I drew them, and then I sewed them together. I layered them two on top of each other so that, you know, it wouldn't be see-through. Now with all of the bodice pieces, I sewed them first inside out, then flipped them right side out, and then sewed along that top seam right there again to really press it down. Now, that's where on a normal garment I would use an iron, but Go figure, you can't use an iron on something made out of plastic, it just melts and shrinks and makes the house smell awful. So yeah, I didn't see that coming, but I learned my lesson. Luckily the sewing machine does work on stuff made out of plastic, apparently, and my bodice started taking shape pretty nicely. Now the way I made the skirt was actually really easy. I just took the squares, or uh, rectangles, I don't know, shapes, I was homeschooled, and I cut them into diagonal, like triangle type pieces, okay? And then I just eyeballed it and straightened up all the edges, tried to make it as exact as possible, and then I rounded, no, I'm gonna fit them together, what, what am I doing here? I should have watched this before, I just started blindly doing voiceover, um, yep, I'm rounding up the edges, knew it! So after I rounded the bottom and the top, I repeated those steps with more feed bags, made more pieces, and then I laid them out into a big donut shape. Next, I taped and sewed the pieces together two at a time. I used clear plastic scotch tape because it's pretty hard to pin through plastic feed bags. So I sewed them together two at a time, and then I sewed the two pieces into four, and then those two four pieces into eight, and then those two eight pieces into 16, and then I actually didn't get to 16 pieces, but I just had to show everyone that I know how to multiply. Hashtag homeschool. At this point, I made a lot of decisions. I decided to do a fitting on my dress form, and I decided it had a retro feel, so I decided to go with it. And I decided to go for a retro garden party theme, and then I decided to stop eating gluten, and then I decided to make the back of my bodice a lace-up bodice. Now how I did that was I cut up a bunch of strips of feed bag, and I folded them and taped them in place on the back of the bodice in neat little rows. Then I sewed across it, because you don't want to rely on scotch tape to hold that together. Can you guess why I'm cutting up this Cheerios and generic Cheerios box? Well, that kind of gives it away. You guessed it, I'm making a hat, because what's a garden party without a hat? I don't really know, I've never been to one, but I would assume you wear hats. I don't know, someone invite me. So the hat had these like bumpy kinks that I couldn't get out with the iron. Yes, I know, I try to iron everything. So I taped around the edge with wire to give it some stability and it took care of that problem. And then, okay, then I traced traced the hat onto some feed bag, bag paper and cut some edges using, I traced with a marker first and cut, okay, I'm just moving too fast and I can't keep up with myself. Point is, I covered my hat in feed bag because I wanted it to look white and not like a cereal box on my head. Now in the spirit of trash, I decided to use this old orange bag net thing to make a birdcage on my hat, because what's a vintage hat without one? And if you're wondering, the trim on the hat is braided mire bag, and if you're wondering about those flowers you see right there, well, this was the most time-consuming part of my project. I cut a bunch of feed bags into strips, then I folded them and stapled them into place, and I made over 200 of these. I really wanted to look like a garden threw up on me. But alas, 200 flowers by themselves was not enough. These flowers needed sparkle, and I had to do it in a recycled way. So, I cut up a bunch of old CDs and DVDs into literally a bajillion pieces, and then glued them individually onto all of my flowers. So then I stapled some of those flowers onto my bodice. Now I feel like it's a good time to explain to you what I was doing this for. It was for a recycled designing competition here in Finn. I'm actually not going to tell you where I live, because then you could find me and stalk me. But Anyway, so then I hot glued a bunch of the flowers onto the skirt. I didn't staple them because, I just think about it, okay, it just, like, wouldn't work, okay? And, oh, I'm tired of making this video. Okay, so I'll just show you the finished project. Yay! And spin. Yay. <laughs> That's insane. There were some other things that I made, like my jewelry, shoes, and purse that I didn't put in the video because I really just wanted this to focus on the dress, and I felt like it turned out pretty good. There were definitely some major downfalls, like the fact that it was extremely noisy when I walked around, 
it was really hot, kind of traps in heat. Uh, I smelled like chicken food, and I got like a quadrazillion cuts all over my arms from, you know, rubbing up against CD shards. But it was worth it because I was able to win, and I got in the paper, and it was awesome, and my parents were finally proud of me, and they put me on the fridge, but, you know, my parents were already proud. My parents are good. I have good parents, but...